All right, here are solutions for uh, the worksheet we did in class today. I think I'm going to break this up into two different videos because I think this is going to be too long. So this one will just be with the log rules portion. So the first four questions. Um, at any rate, if you're going to do any, a worksheet on log rules, it would probably help to know the log rules. Here are the log rules. These would be good things to have memorized. So what I'm going to do is apply these to these different problems. So this first one here, you might think it's an application of this first log rule. And eventually it will be because I have the log of something plus the log of something else. But because of this two right here, and it turns out this one half right here, I can't directly apply this first log rule. I have to get rid of, in some sense, this two and this one half. And the way I'll do that is by applying this third log rule, which tells me that any time I'm taking the log of an exponent, I can take that exponent and bring it down in front here. Or similarly, if I have a coefficient down in front here, I can bring it up in the exponent. So I can say that this thing right here is equal to the log of 16 to the 1 half power plus the log of 5 to the second power. And then down here in the denominator, you can take care of this at any point. The log of 1,000, that's asking you the question. First of all, you have to know that when you don't specify the log, it's implied that it's base 10. So this is really the log base 10 of 1,000, which is asking you the question, to what power must you raise 10 to make it 1,000? Well, 10 to the third power is 1,000, so the log of 1,000 is just equal to 3. So I can replace this entire thing with the 3 right here. Okay, um, now I could apply this first log rule, although I'm going to clean things up a little bit first. I'm going to, maybe down here, say that the 16 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 16, which is just 4. And 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. And 3 minus 1 is just 2. Um, and now I can apply this first log rule because I have the log of something, 4 in this case, plus the log of something else. So I can rewrite that as the log of that product, 4 times 25. So it's the log of 100 divided by 2. And the log of 100 is just equal to 2. Kind of running low on room, but I guess that'll work. Um, because, again, the base is implied to be 10 here. And 10 to the second power is equal to 100. So this is 2 divided by 2, which is just equal to 1, which is the answer. All right, moving on. In this second one here, you got nested logs, which is a little bit challenging, um, but we can deal with them. Kind of start from the inside here. So this is the natural log of something. And what is that something? Well, it's the log base 20 of something. And what is that something? Well, the log base 2 of 4 to the 10th power, I can apply my third log rule to take this exponent and bring it down in front. But when I say down in front, I don't mean way out here. I mean in front of this log because it is the argument for this log that's being raised up to an exponent. So this 10 comes right here, and I get 10 times the log base 2 of 4. And the nice thing about the log base 2 of 4 is that it's just a number. I guess if I'm trying to color code this, I'll keep this in green. Although I don't know how long this color coding will last. Um, log base 2 of 4 is just asking you to what power must you raise 2 to make it equal to 4. Well, 2 to the second power is 4, so the log base 2 of 4 is just 2. So this is just 10 times 2 in here. So really, this question is just asking me, I'll jump up here, what is the natural log of the log base 20 of 20. Well, the log base 20 of 20 is asking me to what power must I raise this 20 to make it 20? Well, 20 to the first power is 20. So the log base 20 of 20 is just 1. And the natural log of 1 is just asking me to what power must I raise the e that is implied right here to make that equal to 1? Well, e to the 0 power is equal to 1, so the natural log of 1 is just 0. So the answer here is just 0. And up here I had my answer of 1. I guess I'll put a box around it so you can see where the answer is. And move it on. Uh, this one is pretty challenging. The natural log of 1 minus 3 times the log base 6 of 2 plus this quotient minus this thing. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, the natural log of 1, we just figured out in the prior problem, that's just 0. So this is really just 0 minus 3 times the log base 6 of 2. I can use my third log rule in reverse if you want to take this 3 and move it up to the exponent. So I could rewrite this as the log base 6 of 2 to the third power. 
Uh, this one here, there's a little hint. Instead of thinking about this as log base 6 of 4 all divided by 2, kind of the way it's written, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So you could think about it as 1 half times the log base 6 of 4. And the reason it might benefit you to think it about it like that is then you can apply your third log rule to this. But I'll wait till the next step to do that. And what I can do is a couple ways you could do this. Um, yeah, let's bring the negative 2 up into the exponent, which actually, okay. So I could either take this 2 and bring it up into the exponent and make it minus log base 6 of 3 to the second power. Or I could take the negative 2 and bring it up into the exponent to make this log base 6 of 3 to the negative 2 power. And I'm going to choose to do it this way, although really you could do it either way you want. And furthermore, going back here, when I took this 3 and brought it up into the exponent, when I made this a log base 6 of 2 to the third power, that's totally fine, but I don't like having this negative floating around out in front. So instead of bringing the 3 up into the exponent, I wish I would have brought the negative 3 up into the exponent. And it's not too late to do that. We just write it like this. So now I took that negative 3 and brought that up into the exponent, which leaves this as a positive. Uh, so 0 plus, I don't even have to write that 0 plus. I can just say I have the log base 6 of 2 to the negative third power. That's the same as 1 over 2 to the third power. Plus, um, I can take this 1 half and bring it up into the exponent. So I got the log base 6 of 4 to the 1 half power. And then I got the log base 6 of 1 over 3 squared because 3 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 divided by 3 to the second power. Clean this up a little bit. I got the log base 6 of 1 over 2 cubed, that's 1 eighth, plus the log base 6 of the square root of 4, that's just 2, plus the log base 6 of 1 over 3 squared, that's 1 ninth. And so now I can apply my first log rule here, kind of apply it twice to this sum of logs and then that sum of logs to write this as the log base 6 of whatever 1 8 times 2 times 1 ninth is. 1 8 times 2 times 1 ninth. Well, let's see, 1 8 times 2 times 1 ninth, that's 2 over 72, which reduces to 1 over 36. And the log base 6 of 1 36th, that's just asking you what power do you have to raise 6 up to to make it 1 over 36. Well, 6 squared is 36, so if I raise 6 to the negative 2 power, 6 to the negative 2 power would be 1 over 36. So this answer right here is negative 2. Okay, last one for this video. Um, kind of working in reverse on this problem, I guess, although you've... Yeah, and the rest of them, you've been kind of combining logs using our log rules, loosely speaking. Um, in this one, we're going to be breaking this up into a bunch of different logs. So, first thing to notice is that you have the log of a bunch of stuff raised up to the one-half power. That's what the square root right here represents. So I can take that one-half power and bring it down in front using my third log rule. And what I have is the log of, well, let's see, 2 times x squared times y to the one-third power divided by 20 times z to the third power, something like that. Um, and you can start breaking that up right now if you want. Um, sure, why not? I have one-half times, let's see, using my second log rule, so says if the, you have the log of a quotient, you can do the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. So I can make this the log of the top, which was 2x squared y to the 1 third, minus the log of the bottom, which was 20z to the third power. And now each of these logs, I can apply my first log rule to because they're logs of products. 2 times z squared times y to the 1 third or 20 times z cubed. So I get 1 half times, I'm going to have to go down to another line for this, I think. 1 half times the log of 2 plus the log of x squared 
plus the log of y to the 1 3rd minus, and I want to subtract all this stuff, so I'll throw some parentheses in, the log of 20 plus the log of z to the third power. Okay, I can clean this up a little bit by, what should I do, apply my third log rule. I'm running out of room, so I'm trying to think if I can shortcut anything, but I'm not gonna shortcut anything. Log of two plus two log of x, it's applying the third log rule there, plus one third log of y, Again, applying the third log rule. I can take this negative and distribute it through to make it negative log of 20. Uh, I can bring that three down in front using the third log rule and make it minus for this minus three log of z. Uh, now what I can do is combine this log of two minus log of 20 and distribute this one half through. Sure, I can do that both at once. Let's take this one half and distribute it through. So I have, okay, fine. I'm gonna wait another step. I don't wanna cut out steps. I know that's bad form. I got two of these log x things. I got one third of these log y things. I got three, or negative three, I guess, of these log z things. Um, and then if you look at the numbers, you got plus two, uh, you have the log of 2 here minus the log of 20 here. So you can apply your second log rule to make that plus the log of whatever 2 divided by 20 is. Well, 2 divided by 20 is 1 tenth. And the log of 1 tenth is negative 1. So when I take this 1 half and distribute it through, I get for my final answer, 1 half times 2 cancel each other out, and I just get 1 log of x. 1 half times 1 third gives me one-sixth log of y. One-half times negative three gives me negative three-halves log of z. And then the log of one-tenth is negative one, and one-half times negative one is negative one-half. So if I want to get this into this form where it's a log of x plus b log of y plus c log of z plus d, I'd need to write it like this. And sure enough, negative 3 halves, negative 1 half, 1 sixth, and 1 appear. Negative 3 halves, negative 1 half, 1 sixth, and there's the 1. Whew, so there's that answer, and I'm going to stop this video here and make another one for the log equations.